In episode five, we really get to see the dark heart that beats inside Oz's chest. The situation is so stiff and so dangerous. I can hear my heart pounding because at any given moment, something horrible may happen. I'm getting my son back, but on the other hand, Nadi already knows that this is why I was afraid of. This is the end. Oz stands there and watches with morbid fascination. That's a part of him that we haven't really seen. Sal is a complete sociopath, but does love his family with the kind of passion with which he would chop somebody's head off, you know, if they cross that family. I am offering you an alliance. We kill Oz, and then we take over the city. Notoriously, the Falcons and Maronis are always at odds in the comics. I thought it was interesting and seems right to have Sophia knowing that the Falcons have wronged her just as much as the Falcons have wronged the Maronis to try to team up with Salvatore Maroni to align the powers that they have to get Oz. Sophia's not beholden to what her father would have wanted for her anymore. She's not beholden to anybody. Sophia, she comes into the morning after with a plan, very much in control. Johnny Beatty's not among the dead. Any idea where we might find him? I'm sorry, no. You can think that she is insane. Arkham could make you insane, but she's very smart. Her mind is ticking right along. I need untraceable cash. I know that my father would have kept it somewhere close. He's one of the last living people who knows all of it. There's a part of him that actually has a little bit of conflict with how she was wronged by the family, but he also does think she's freaking nuts. <laughs> There's such history between them because he bore witness to what happened to her and he also did nothing. God, she was beautiful, you know. She had that laugh when you got her going and knock you out. That scene is so dark, but it's also beautiful in a way because it's these two people actually talking about the person they both lost. How sad that they can only talk about that in the last moments of his life. My father's legacy is dead. I am a gigante. Let's not be rash here. She wants to own this part of her past that rejects the sort of dark patriarchy of her father. In the comics, it's Sofia Falcone Gigante because she marries into a gigante family, but I thought it was more appropriate to have her take her mother's maiden name. That's Sofia's moment of taking back power and declaring herself to the world. That's such an excellent last twist of the knife into her father's legacy to be like, your legacy ends with you, and I'm going to actually honor my mother, and this is going to be a matriarchal mob family. It's her world, and we're living in it. I think she should have probably kept me around a little longer. I could have been helpful. <laughs> But, but at the same time, it's like, could she really trust him? Cinematically, we did use tracks and dollies and steady cam as opposed to handheld because she is in control at this moment. Meanwhile, in the unpredictability of Oz, we're in this handheld, gritty kind of world. We're chasing him. We're trying to catch up to what's going on. Look, I got a lot of heat on me. I need you to get my mom out of there. He has killed Taj and Nadia. That's a real screw up by Oz. He's afraid Sophie's gonna find out about his mother and use her against him. That is his big Achilles heel. Crown Point is a place where Victor grew up that he doesn't want to go back to. It brings about painful memories. Crown Point is the worst impacted by the flood. So not only do they get the most water, do they get the most damage, but they are also the lowest economic area of Gotham and the most neglected after the flood. And when she walks into the apartment, she's very disappointed because it reminds her so much of where she brought up the boys. We wanted this particular apartment to feel lived in but neglected. So you will see elements of the family that lived there before and abandoned it after the flood. Mentally, for Frances's progression, this is a real downward spiral for her. What's wrong? Oh. The status of Eve's apartment as a safe place for Oz changes in episode five. Me and the girls. Yeah. You dangled us in front of her. I didn't dangle you. Eve is no fool. She's there for her girls. She is Mother Hen. She's super protective. Eve and her girls, maybe the strongest family unit we have on the show. She's tremendously afraid of how all of this is gonna backfire. I need you to fix this. 
That's what I do, I fix things. He's bringing the hangman very close to home. That is extremely problematic for Eve. She's done being his safe space. Oz, I'm not going with you. Everything he plans for goes awry. He loses control to the point where he's breaking vases in Eve's apartment. She deeply cares about him, but not at the cost of herself. Eve rejects him. When he climbs into bed with his mom, this handheld camera movement becomes the stillness where you think, okay, here we are, now it's gonna be all right. And the opposite happens. She quietly decimates him. What kind of man can't take care of his own mother? He does everything to take care of her, and it's not enough. The women in his life push him away when he goes for comfort. It just kills him. He's constantly looking for his mother's approval and her love. He's at this really low point, and then he finds a jars full of coins. Hey, kid, let's go. We, as the audience, we don't know where we're going. He does. Oz starts to realize that there's potential for his operation there. You know what thrives in a place like this? Mushrooms. Bingo. It's the first up moment for Oz in the whole episode.